let's talk a bit about the context of the uh, interest in the Isle of Man that you have, obviously. Um, we've heard before about the family links here. Um, you've mentioned you don't live here, but, but you know, have a lot of uh, ties in your ancestry and that kind of thing, which go back quite a long way. Um, also, from reading your blog, and I would encourage listeners to, to have a read because there's lots of very interesting um, comment from you in there. There's obviously an interest in the Isle of Man in a political sense as well. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, this wasn't actually something I expected, but there is an aspect of the, the work I do which overlaps a little with an aspect of the the business sector on the Isle of Man. That's because I work for a not-for-profit organisation, a campaigning group called Global Witness, and we do investigations into a range of issues, but a big one is corruption cases, a lot of them in volatile developing parts of the world. And what we've found over many years is that typically in these situations, the people who are stealing perhaps from their own people, corrupt politicians or local or foreign businessmen who are conniving with them, and they're no fools, they don't stash the proceeds under the bed, they spirit them away through a globalised system of corruption, much of it is run through offshore centres. And you know, I should stress that the Isle of Man is, is, is not a place which comes up the most frequently in these cases, but it, it does occasionally. And in the past year, the Isle of Man has got caught up in this uh, international debate about company ownership secrecy and came under a lot of pressure back in March from Westminster MPs to create a public register of uh, company owners, so-called beneficial owners, which was met with indignation here, uh, but a few weeks later the government did announce that it was going to create one of those registers. So there is that point of intersection for me, yes, from a professional perspective. And have you, um, have you found more whilst you've been here? I haven't on this on this particular visit I've really concentrated on the swimming on some of the preparatory visits I made I did take the opportunity to talk to a few people who know about these issues in the financial services industries people in the government who I have to say were very generous with their time to to get a bit more of a flavor of what people were thinking and yes because I I work on it I believe in it also trying to make the case for more transparency around company ownership because these so-called uh, anonymous companies or shell companies are they are the vehicle which all sophisticated criminals, corrupt politicians, um, use globally to, to, to cover their tracks. Uh, and it's important globally that the Isle of Man, as you know, a place which I think reasonably regards itself as a, a more reputable offshore jurisdiction, um, is, is playing its part in, in raising the bar. And so I was learning a little more. Um, and I would have to say that much as I recognize that the Isle of Man uh, is making lots of efforts to, to, to keep its house in on order. On the other hand, you don't actually have to look very far to find quite a few non-insignificant cases where people have sought to launder money through Isle of Man company structures. It does happen, unfortunately. And you've mentioned some of the more high-profile cases uh, in your blog recently. Um, just finally, you've mentioned that this uh, joint statement, I think it was, from the Crown Dependencies towards creating the public um, registers of beneficial ownership. I've forgotten the exact time scale, but mm. uh, within a defined time scale anyway. Um, there's a perception from some critics here that that's sort of tokenism. Do you think that Global Witness would 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 agree? I think the position that Global Witness would take is that it's a very good thing, very important thing that the Isle of Man has uh, publicly pledged to create one of these ownership registries. We do have some questions about the time scale. It seems very long. Uh, I have often heard from people here that the existing register of company beneficial ownership, there is one, but a closed access one, is very good. And if that's the case, you can't help wondering why it takes four years just to pass a law which would then make it public. And the other reflection I would have is that from a personal point of view, somebody who cares about the Isle of Man, feels an attachment, doesn't want to see it associated with corruption and money laundering, I would merely encourage leaders here to be a bit self-confident, maybe be a bit more proactive. Um, when you look at marine conservation, for instance, it's very interesting to see that the Isle of Man is regarded outside of the island as setting a very good example and being bold and designating 
over 51% of its inshore waters as marine nature reserves. Not many jurisdictions have managed to do that. So there are these real strengths in being a, a small, um, autonomous, but, but quite nimble jurisdiction which can get things done. And personally, I would love to see the Isle of Man take a similar approach to uh, guarding against issues like money laundering in the financial services sector. And you've spoken quite a bit about the sort of reputational implications of lots of these things, um, which must be felt in London and probably further afield too. Yes, reputation is very important because the Isle of Man needs to have a good reputation uh, in order to differentiate itself from other offshore jurisdictions which don't really have a reputation and, and really engage in a sort of race to the bottom type approach. It needs that to sustain itself, but of course the flip side is it does have to, to earn it. And from what I can see in the past couple of years, uh, in some respects, the government, um, certainly law enforcement agencies, have made real efforts to improve the structures and institutions dedicated to dealing with the threat of money laundering. But it does appear to me that perhaps there's a way to go in terms of changing the, the culture within the business sector itself so that people don't think it's acceptable to turn a blind eye to, for instance, creating a shell company for somebody who carries a very significant money laundering risk and may actually be cheating and impoverishing the people in the country that they come from. Thank you very much for speaking to us with both of your hats on and um, happy resting. 